Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of CUDA Crash Course, we're going to be taking a look at convolution. So in the next series of videos, what we'll do is we'll build up convolution starting from a very naive, simple 1D convolution, build up some optimizations for that kernel, uh, and then move it out to more complex things like optimizing 2D convolution. But to start out, we should really explain what we're optimizing. That way we can kind of visualize where the opportunities for improvement are. So we're going to start with 1D convolution, and so we'll have an array, and it'll have some values in it. Let's say for the sake of this example, all these values are going to be 1, right? And this will be our input array, and then we'll have another shorter array, which will be known as our mask. And let's say that the values of this mask are 1, 2, and 3. And what we want to do is some kind of transformation using the original array in the mask to create an output array. Now the way that this works, let's actually give some space here between these two so we can fill in a gap in the middle. So in order to calculate whatever this first element is, what we'll do is we'll center our mask around the element in the original array. Say for the first one it will be the first element, so we'll center our mask around this element. So in that case we'll have one over here, two over here, and then three over here, and all three of these elements will work to create the first element of this new array. And the way that it works is that we'll multiply these elements by its corresponding entry in the original array. So it'll be one times three, one times two, and you can think of everything outside the bounds of the original array as being zeros, right? And so we'll just avoid that computation because it doesn't actually contribute so in this case, it'll be 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1, or 5. And so the next process to calculate the next element is we just shift this over. So we sweep the mask over by one position, and we center it around the next element, which will be this element right here. So in this case, we'll have 1, 2, 3, and all three of those elements will go to produce the next value in our result array. So in this case, it'll be 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1. Or finally, it'll just be uh, 6 right here. And we'll sweep this over. And if we go off the right side, uh, just like we ignored this element that went off as just a 0, we'll do the same thing if it goes off the other side. So that's basically the optimi or that's basically the, uh, the application that we're going to port to be GPU code. So where does the parallelism lie? Well, the parallelism lies in the fact that, you know, each of these computations, so in order to calculate the first element, we can do that with a thread. The second element, we could do it with a completely separate thread because these two computations are completely independent. So the way that we'll initially do this is that for each element in the result array, it will be calculated by one thread. So let's go ahead and see how that looks in the actual code itself. So if we go ahead and open up our example, which is convolution.cu, Sure, I spelled them correctly, and we'll zoom in a little bit. So on the host side of things, what we'll do is we'll do a convolution, uh, convolution rather, on uh, two to the twenty elements, right? So that's what we're doing here. Then we'll alloc and then we'll have a mask that will be seven elements. So we're sweeping a seven element mask over the entire uh, two to the twenty elements. Then we'll have. Uh, We'll allocate it on the host. We'll initialize it with some uh, random values, both the mask and the uh, uh, the array that we're going to do convolution on. Then we'll sweep the mask over. We'll both have just random elements in it. So the mask will have random numbers between zero and nine, inclusive, and the uh, large array will have numbers between zero and ninety-nine, inclusive. We'll allocate some space on the uh, on the GPU. We'll copy it over. In this case, we'll use thread block sized of uh, 256, and then the number of thread blocks will just be uh, the number of total elements divided by 256, and then we'll pad it with this uh, plus threads minus one divided by threads. Okay, and then we'll call our convolution kernel, and so we'll pass it in the original array of two to the 20 elements, a mask of seven elements, and then we'll have a two to the 20 element result and then we'll give it the length of the array, which should be 2 to the 20, and then we'll give it the length of the mask, which will be 7. 
and then we'll copy the result back and then we'll verify result, the result by doing convolution on the CPU. All right, so inside of our verification function, you'll just do the con it'll just do convolution and it'll assert if we get the incorrect result. So how do we do this on the GPU? So here's our uh, GPU kernel. And again, we're passing in an array, a mask, and a pointer to the result array and the two dimensions in and M. So the first thing we need to do is figure out which thread are we. So we're launching as many threads as we have elements in the array. So we're launching two to the 20 threads. And so this, uh, this base offset using the block ID and the block dimension plus the thread ID gives us the global position. So am I thread zero acting on element zero? Am I thread 2048 acting on element uh, 2047? Uh, right, so threads are zero index, so the 2048th thread acts on the index 2047. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll calculate the radius of the mask. And the reason why we need to calculate the radius of the mask is to handle the case, say, for the first element that, you know, our actual mask itself is hanging off the array, so it has a negative index for some of it. And so we need to figure out, you know, whether, so we're not accessing something that's out of bounds of our memory. We need to make sure that you know, if we're hanging off the array that we're not actually calculating those values. And then we need to calculate our start position. So this will be our starting point and that will just be our TID minus the radius. So in this case, if we go back to our picture and we go ahead and draw this out again for the first element. So here we'll have one that's hanging off in the space over here that we can think of as a zero. And then we'll have two and three. So this is our mask right here. So this position or our start here would end up being negative one. So let's go ahead and think about this in terms of threads. So this thread is the for the first element will be index zero, right? So this will be index zero. So the radius of this will be three divided by two, right? And it's rounded to an integer. So the radius will be one. And so if we look back at our code, our code says our TID, which is zero minus the radius, which in the case of our hand-drawn example would be one. So our start would be negative one, right? So that's how we um, figure out, you know, where to, where's the starting point uh, for our computation, right? Because in this simple case of our drawing, it's just three elements, right? And so we're starting at negative one and we're going to one, right? So zero, oops delete that negative one and then one so that's the range that our for loop has to go over because we have in three elements in our mask and so we have starting at negative one going to one okay and then we'll have a temp value for calculation because like I said we're successively doing uh, one index times the, uh, the corresponding index of the other array uh, of the original array and so we'll accumulate those three multiplications, uh, those three products together. And so in this if statement right here, this is how we handle going off the array. So we make sure that start plus j, j being uh, the element of the mask that we're on, if that's greater than or equal to zero, so if we are in the actual original array, if we're not, ha we don't have a negative index, we'll go ahead and do the computation. And we have to make sure that it's less than the end of the array, right? So we have an array of n elements. We need to make sure that we're sticking within the bounds of that array. Otherwise, all we do is we accumulate the array plus the position, which will be start plus j, and then times mask j. And so every single thread will calculate one final result in the final uh, array output. And then at the very end, we'll just write back the results. So thread TID uh, will go ahead and compute element TID in that array, and that uh, element's value will be temp. And so that's exactly what we do on the CPU side as well. We calculate a start based upon the radius, and we do the same for loop with the same bounds check, except this is going to be serial. The Arcuda one will be parallel. So let's go ahead and run this kernel and see what happens. So we'll do nvcc-o on convolution and we can go ahead and run convolution. And we see that it completed successfully. And we can go ahead and run nvprof dot slash convolution. And we see that in order to do two to the 20 elements, it really only took us about 280 microseconds. So in this case, we 
Our min copies actually take more time than our kernel itself. And so we can scale this up and have you know a larger array that we're doing convolution on. We can have a larger mask. These are all tunable parameters that really depends on the application. This is just an example. So where do we have opportunities for improvement here? So if we consider you know, the operations that we're actually doing, uh, one thing that's happening is that the mask itself, we're not changing the mask. So in this case, we can do something, uh, we can use what's known as constant memory inside of the GPU, and we can actually store the mask or end up having the mask stored in the constant cache. So this is a minor improvement that will uh, keep us from having to you know, keep loading this uh, from memory, this mask from memory every single time you want to use it. So that's one optimization we can do. Another thing that we should know, uh, note rather, is that for between threads, say between the thread that calculates the zeroth element and the thread that calculates the first element, there's really only one difference in the elements of the original array that gets accessed, right? So the zeroth element accesses element zero and element one. The second thread accesses element 0, 1, and 2. So there's a lot of overlap between those two threads, which means that there's a lot of locality there. And so we'll see how we can block this and uh, load all these values into shared memory instead of having to load it from main memory uh, every single time and just hope that we hit in the cache. And so we'll see that optimization as well. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. As always, feel free to check out all this code on github.com slash coffee before arch. So I've got stuff on C++, including some more recent stuff on using Intel's optimized libraries like the math kernel library for things like matrix multiplication. We also have stuff on Python 3, uh, parallel programming in C++, and then here's our CUDA programming. So today we looked at naive 1D convolution. So feel free to check out this code, uh, download it, play around with it. And let me know if you have any questions. And as always, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.